Jameis Winston and Jordan Lynch have performed remarkably this season. The numbers are staggering, and the way they've led their teams to unbeaten seasons is just as impressive. Chris Houston from HeismanPundit.com is with us. And, Chris, as we take a look at your top five in your straw poll, you've already called this race for Winston. So uh, tell me, what kind of a knockout punch would Lynch have to deliver to make this thing interesting when they announce the winner week from Saturday? Well, there's a very special stat that Jordan Lynch can accomplish on, side, or on Friday night. If he gets 245 yards rushing that night, he will become the first player in FBS history to be a 2,000-yard passer and a 2,000-yard rusher. That's a very powerful stat. That's the kind of stat that can maybe capture the imagination of Heisman voters. And if they're looking for a little fig leaf to find someone else to vote for because they're not too comfortable about Jameis Winston, they might go Jordan Lynch's way. So the closest margin of victory was back in 2009 when Mark Ingram won by just 28 votes. The largest margin was Troy Smith back in 2006. So, Chris, I would imagine this will fall somewhere in the middle. How do you see the final vote tabulation falling? I think this race will look a lot like uh, the 2001 race where Eric Crouch of Nebraska won or the 1962 Heisman race uh, where uh, Terry Baker of Oregon State won. In those races, uh, the final, the winner only won one race. Uh, voting region in the Heisman race, and everyone else was sort of spread out. There won't be much of a gap between the top winner or the top vote getter and the number five or number six vote getter. I think we're going to see a lot of uh, uh, players getting support across the regions. I don't think it'll be a big win or a small win. I think it'll be a very medium win for Jameis Winston, unless, of course, some of these allegations turn out to be uh, bearing fruit. All right, so you mentioned that. Leads me to the next question. The ballots will have already been turned in by the time Florida State Attorney decides whether or not to file charges against Winston in this ongoing sexual assault investigation. So it could be an unprecedented scenario here, Chris. What do you expect to happen? Well, it's anybody's guess, but the nightmare scenario for the Heisman Trust would be for the, uh, the charges to come a few days after Heisman votes are due on December 9th, which is next Monday. And the, the ceremony is on Saturday. If, let's say, the charges come on Wednesday, what do they do? Can Jameis Winston even leave the state of Florida? Will he be under arrest? Can he get the Heisman in absentia the way uh, Barry Sanders and Andre Ware did uh, back in 88 and 89? So it's a really big question. Are they going to want to have the media circus around there? It's uncharted territory, uncharted waters for the Heisman Trust. But they don't like to deal with hypotheticals. I think they'll deal with it as it comes. And we just have to wait and see. All right, Chris, you know, some have decided to leave Winston off their ballots altogether, so we'll see how things shake out. Appreciate it, man. Bonnie, the Heisman Trophy announcement is a week from Saturday and will take place at the Best Buy Theater in New York's Times Square.